All right, what I'd like to do now is walk you through a scenario of how I would do underwater photography start to finish if I was wading in the water or snorkeling and then if I was going to go scuba diving. So the first thing is I would do the research on the location like we talked about. I would know what kind of wildlife is there, what the tides and currents are like, what the water is like, what, can, what I can expect for traffic from other people, lifeguards that might be present, accessibility, how far I'm going to have to walk from my car, all that stuff. The next thing I'm going to do is get my gear together after I've picked the right time to go. I'm going to get both the gear I'm going to have in the water, which is going to include some shoes with uh, some kind of rubberized sole, maybe even old tennis shoes that are going to prevent me from getting cut up on my feet, maybe a wetsuit if it's cold, maybe just a, some coveralls for chafing if I'm going to walk around and could possibly get cut up. Gloves are also a good idea. The other thing I would have is some kind of inflatable life preserver or a life preserver uh, that's always inflated, right, like a normal life jacket, a signaling device and a marker so that people could see me if I get lost or need to call for assistance. I would also have someone coming with me that was going to watch me and that I was going to watch them as buddies in the water. And I would also be sure that they were lifeguards. The next thing I would have is my camera, camera case, and a strobe. After I had all that together, I would head down to the water. I would first arrive and simply observe, watch the water. I would look for areas where the water looks like it's got a current, where the water is kind of disturbed in, in just a location, or where there's like a deeper spot and the water looks like it's disturbed right there, like there's a ripple in the water along a line. That's generally going to tell me it's a place I need to watch out for, and maybe that the place isn't safe at all under these conditions. I'm going to look for the surf and see how it is. Okay, if all that's in order, I'm going to put on my gear first that I need for the water, which is going to include all that safety gear we talked about, maybe fins, maybe mask and snorkel as well. After that's all in order, my camera's in its case, and I've got the flash on, I'm going to go into the water. Now, as I'm going into the water, the, the camera's not going into the water with me, right? I'm going to go up to about chest deep, and then I'm going to do a leak check. I'm going to dunk my camera underwater while I'm watching underwater, and I'm going to look for bubbles that are coming out of my camera case. Because here's the deal. If bubbles are coming out, air is leaving your camera case, guess what's coming in? Yeah, water. You see, there's a little seal that's made up usually by a rubber gasket, a rubberized gasket around your camera. And if a piece of sand or cloth, or if it's just out of place or it's got a kink in it, it can be leaking. Now I've had very expensive camera gear underwater and had slight leaks before. I was able to catch it in time and bring it out where I did not cause thousands of dollars worth of damage, thankfully. So the first thing you want to do in the water is do that leak check. If it fails the leak check, you and the camera are immediately getting out of the water and you're going to fix it. So let's assume that it does pass its leak check. What's the next thing you want to do? You want to take a test image. Maybe just take a picture of your foot, a picture into the water, or a picture of the ground. What I'm checking for is that the camera functions properly, the strobe functions properly, and that things generally seem correctly exposed, in focus, with the right color, and a decent composition for what I'm shooting for, just a test. At that point, I know everything is ready to go. I've got my gear on, I've got my safety gear on, I've got my buddy, and I've got my camera. At that point, I'm going to orient myself just to make sure one more time I know where I'm at, and I'm going to go off looking for my first subject and first pictures. It could be an interesting rock formation, a nice spot of coral, or turtles. After I've found that, I'm going to fix in and get some of those images like we talked about, working my way out all the way in to the appropriate distance, checking as I do that my exposure, color, focus, and composition. After I'm done with my first subject or first spot that I'm interested in, I'm probably going to reorient myself to my surroundings. So I'm going to look up and make sure I know where I'm at, and generally I'm going to know where I'm going so that I can get back. After I've done that, I'm going to progress along through the chute until I'm done, at which point I'm going to make my way out of the water, back to the beach, take off the gear that I had on first, and then I'm going to look to clean off both my gear and my camera. The best way to clean off your camera is by dumping it into a, uh, to a container of hot soapy water. That's really going to get the salt out best. If you can't do that, washing it off or hosing it off is okay, but isn't ideal. Now, the other part that you want to get really well is to get that water off the camera. Now, if you have some kind of compressed air to blow it out of the recesses, that's best. Water trapped in those deep recesses of your camera case is going to cause damage to the metal. Now, if you can't have uh, compressed air to blow out that water, it's fine to towel dry it off and leave it out to dry. Then you can take your images out and post-process them. 
Now, if I was going to go on a dive trip, I would get all my dive gear in order, all my camera gear in order, and I would personally go on a boat with a guide. Those are the best dives, the ones I've always enjoyed the most, and the way I would do any dive in the future. So I would go out with my guide, I would get my dive gear on first, and normally on the boat, there's a, a rinse tank for cameras specifically. I would do my first leak check there. If it passed, I would get in the water and have one of the assistants on the boat hand me my camera. Now the reason I wouldn't jump in with it or roll in with my camera is that it can dislodge some of the internal parts of the housing or can cause the, the strobe to bump against the camera or you can just bump it against the boat if you're jumping in and doing something silly. So after I've got my camera, I'll do a leak check in the water again. I'll then take a test shot to make sure everything's working properly. And then I'll go down with the group and conduct the dive with my buddy. Now, if you're in a group, one thing I'll say is that if you stay in the front of the group or a little off to the side, it'll prevent the bottom from getting too stirred up from the other members of the group and will generally result in better images. Now, just work with your guide ahead of time to make sure he understands what you want to do and you'll find that you'll have better results that way. After the dive is done, I'd pretty much do the same thing as I talked about before. Wash my gear off, post-dive everything, get my camera cleaned up, blow it out with air, and then work on the images. So I hope that gives you a idea of how you can structure your time in the water to be safe. Now one thing I want to talk about safety, which is what we're going to talk about in depth in the next module, is that I am not your safety guide. I'm giving you some helpful tips that I've learned over the years, but there are some really great resources out there that will talk specifically and extensively about water safety. Water safety is very important because the water can be very dangerous. I've personally known people that have died in the water and lost loved ones as well. So it's really a serious issue. And it's normally not because they're attacked by wildlife, it's normally because they drowned. So that's why I'm trying to emphasize safety with everything, but organizations like Patty and Nowy and there's other organizations about water safety in general that are really gonna be helpful. And I'm gonna strongly encourage you to leverage those resources so that you can be um, safe in the water. The most important parts to that are really knowing your limits and not going beyond them. So, I hope that helps you understand how I would approach my time in the water with underwater photography and helps you put together how you would do it as well. Let's get started with the next lesson where we'll take a little bit more in-depth look at safety.